Today's episode is brought to you by Gray Block Pizza on the way to the beach. 1811 Pico Boulevard, Gray Block, get that hitter. I don't know. Yeah, it seems like illegal. It is illegal. It is fucking illegal. But the fact that they get away with it is crazy. What is this shit? Ooh. Roar drink. Roar drink. We're rolling. So Let's roll. Roar drink, dude. Let's we get into roar it. Roar drink. <sighs> we have the probably one of the top 60 or 70 gingers in America right now. Top top 30 or 40. Yeah. According to gingerunite.com. And you know that when there's a biopic or biopic, you're going to play Louis C.K. <laughs> in it. Like, I'll be, actually, I'll, I'm hoping to be Ron Howard, Howard when he dies. Yeah, Ron's I'll be Ron Howard. handsome. Uh, first of all, <laughs> first of all, bro, I'm way more handsome than Ron Howard. Whoa, dude. Who would you play in a biopic? You, who would you play? Huh? Who would you play in a biopic? In a biopic, I would probably... When they die, who will you play? Maybe... Mm, let me think about that for a second. Like one of the Clampets? No, you... Yeah, one of the Clampets, maybe? That's so limiting. Okay, well then maybe you could play... Uh, at least Louis is a role you can do something. He's something funny. real. Yeah, you would play. Um, Maybe Brad, you could do Brad Pitt. No, I'm not doing. Not Brad looks Pitt, wise, dude. Just confidence wise. No, I definitely don't have that confidence. So you don't have the no. Brad Pitt confidence. No, I think I could do Jeff Garland. You could do Jeff Garland. Oh no, he Jeff can't even game. turn his neck. <laughs> um, let me do. Oh, J- Big Lebowski. The dude. Yeah. You're talking about the actor? Yeah. Well, Jeff Bridges. Yeah. You could be Jeff Bridges, you think? Let's hear yep. it. Yep. All right. Uh, Market 8, Donnie. No, let me try it again. Uh, I don't know what they're talking about. Do you not know any lines from the movie? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like you don't know any fucking yeah, lines from the movie. Market <laughs> 8, Donnie. Jeff Bridges, dude. I know what I'm talking about, dude. Uh, let me try one more. Um, the dude. I'm he the, never says the okay, dude. Well, he whatever. never once says. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> All right, bro. Um, I'm off. But we're in here. Here we are. We, we have are. Andrew Santino. Yo, yo, from the new Whiskey Ginger podcast. Trying. Which is uh, how's that been? It's been actually really good. Yeah, you've had some real schlubs on there. I've seen too. A few, a few, a few, a few. Yeah, a few schlubs. Chris Delano, um, who who lost to you. Or uh, we'll inevitably lose to you in the guest of the year belt. We all know that. Yeah, we'll see. We're just over there, and apparently there's a big to-do about it. Well, but- I think what, what it comes down to is Chris, um, you know you know Samson and Delilah? You know that story about the power From being- the Bible? Yeah, you know, by the power being in- uh, I don't think it's Delilah. Is it Samson and Delilah? Isn't that what it is? Can we look it up, Nick? It is. It is, okay. right? And with the power well, lied in his hair, right? all of the Bible. So I think the power in Chris's hair um, is all he's got. Yeah. And he wants to be the prettiest boy in town. Mm-hmm. And now that you have a mane in the back, a mm-hmm. thick mane, oh yeah, I think it. I think he gets nervous and scared. He's talked privately, and this is off the record, but on the record, he's talked privately. I know to Callan and said that he's threatened by your hair, and he feels like he's gonna. He, he feels like he's gonna get pushed out of the way. He was. I saw him on crying on the four hundred five. He pulled over and was crying. Really on the four hundred five. Yeah. Wow. What yeah. does he drive? Even. It's like a souped up go kart. Oh wow. Yeah. No, he drives like a really fancy, expensive, rich car. Does he? Yeah, really, somebody really nice Somebody said car. the other day, somebody said he has all, like, so much silverware at his house, you'd have to have, like, 7,000 people eating dinner at once. Yeah, it'd be impossible. But also, he it. doesn't even use it. You know yeah. that? He eats with his hands. Does he really? Yeah, Chris eats only with his hands. That's why if you notice, if you guys, the fans, you can get close, he has long, dirty fingernails. Oh, yeah. Because he always eats with his hands. I've seen that. Real, I don't have... Very Kenyan. Yeah, very... Starting yeah. from the nails out, he's yeah. very Kenyan. Yeah, and I think he just gets so threatened by the main that I've. This is what this is just what what Callan told me, that he was threatened by you. So he paid a bunch of people to illegally vote. Unbelievable. But he was because he's like money's not a problem. Wouldn't make a dent. You know oh, all yeah. this shit. Yeah. So he was just paying people to vote. Yeah. Thought I make a dent. Thought I make a dent. I'll pay him. I'll pay to cheat. Yeah. And that's what it is. He said he's gonna start an auto body shop that repairs cars. Said <laughs> called. Did make a dance. Is he really? <laughs> I'd take my fucking car. No, but what I'm starting to realize from them is I don't trust them. Uh, well, who do you trust less, Shab or or Callan? I think one of them is a patsy, and I think it's you think it's Shab, but it's Callan. See my see that's weird because I think the patsy would be Callan. My first instinct when I see him because he's tiny and little, he's kind of like 
you know, I don't know. He's like a little sneaky. I can hide very well. Little yeah. beady, little creepy eyes. Oh, definitely. His eyes have sleeps no color. In a tree. Yeah, he sleeps Dude, up in a tree. Well, here's the thing. If you zoom in on Chris D'Elia's dick, right behind it, there's two nuts, and that's Brendan and Brian. Oh, These dudes shit. are hanging on that fucking guy's dick. They yeah. put out all types of specialty things on the internet this week for for him and last week for him to get extra support. Yeah, they were promoting him hard. Very much. I didn't see you get promoted that much. I didn't either. Hmm. But it just goes to show you that uh, that's the world we live in. I thought that they were uh, help, more healthy than that in their spirit. No. No, no, no. Yeah. Well, because of where, the, the, just their background. You know, yeah. both of those guys come from very... Very priv privileged, shady places. Oh, yeah. So they want privileged, shady people to continue. And we know Chris is privileged and shady. You know his father owns downtown Los Angeles. It's crazy. Every Brandon, building. Brandon used to fight in damn shopping malls and shit. He was just getting fist you know? fights at Westfields. Yeah, or yeah. different stuff, man. There's, they got it. I think, I, think, I think the sad thing about the belt is um, I'm happy that I came in third because I beat those other fucking trash bags. I mean, people were talking a lot of shit on but the But did internet. you think you had a chance at the at the belt? For a second, you did. I was happy. I was happy. No, I was. I knew I wasn't going to compete with you guys. Not, 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 not this early. I don't on. believe that. But I do think next year. Next year, I'll have a way better shot. But I also think I was more mad that people like My Michael Rappaport was even in the running is crazy yeah. to me. That's crazy to me. No Shrat, way. Yeah. No way. Well, somebody said he got, t somebody said that Tony Hinchcliffe got seven votes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even joking. I believe every second. <laughs> I'm not even joking. I, did I didn't know he that. was in it. I, and then I was surprised. I think Swartzen got thrown in there. Yeah. And I love Swartzen, but I was like, I, no way. And then Sasso, uh, who definitely should have been a better contender. Sasso should have been a better, been a better contender. Yeah, but that's only because. I think he didn't even want. I don't think he wanted to be a part of it. No. Well, he said this he is not big enough for him. He doesn't want to drive over here either. Uh. -uh. <laughs> no. No. This would cut his waist off. I mean, he almost died in that chair a couple weeks ago. <laughs> he got swallowed by his chair. <laughs> no, bro. He sweated so bad. His arms were cold and wet. His neck was very was wet. Was he nervous? And cold. Or it was just hot in here. I don't know what was going on. A lot of different things. But bro. he could wear this as like a watch, I guess. <laughs> oh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this would be one of those uh, life alert bracelets for him. <laughs> you know, on the inside it just says his uh, blood his type. heart rate. Yeah, his, and pulse. his heart rate. I think. Um, I think that. I think the. I think the real race was between you, Dalia, and for third was probably me and. Um, uh, and, and Sasso should have been f between me and Sasso. And they should give out a couple of different belts. And I'm curious because, uh, yeah, from the last thing you said, two belts, dude. It just. I think it's bullshit. I think it's bullshit that they're going to do a tie. It's the same way I feel about like when they tie in the NFL. Like that's fucking maddening. I don't think you should ever tie in sports. I think it's bullshit. Yeah. There shouldn't be a tie. And by the way, because it's a tie, I know what they're doing. They're going to have some kind of like thing to make you tie, do a tie off. You know yeah. what I mean? Like an overtime. Well, that's what they want. They're trying to monopolize it. Of course. Yeah. Of course. They're trying to make money off of you. Yeah. Well, that's what they did. They put up they put up different things, different videos. All Watch for this. all for Chris, These are by the, the way. guys. And then you can scroll not. through Bleach Media official, oh, and all he did was post about Dalia, Dalia, Dalia. So you think Chris was paying him too? I don't know I'll because say it this. wouldn't make a dent. Yeah. That's Chris why. has a lot of money, bro. He does. Dude, I was somewhere with him, and I've said this before, where a table was uneven, mm -hmm. and he took like $800 and folded it up and put it under the table <laughs> to make it even. <laughs> Just so he could enjoy his coffee. And that's it, dude. And somebody said he's been like ordering blood off the internet and all kind of stuff. Yes. Yeah. Ordering blood. He does, the, he does such strange things with money. We go to this coffee shop sometimes, and they have his order ready before you know he comes in because he goes all the time. Yeah. I said, that's, that's really cool. And he goes, yeah, but I take care of them. I said, what do you mean you take care of them? He says, I, I take care of them. Don't worry about it. What, child support and stuff? Yeah, he, ta he pays their rent. The oh. two girls that work there, he pays their rent, pays for their kids, a private schooling. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's ridiculous. What Starbucks worker is sending their kid to private schooling? Janice over on Sepulveda. Oh, wow. Unbelievable. <laughs> He's got too much money. Dude, and so this, is, this should be a message to your fans. Um, yeah. Rob him. Rob Chris. You know, you go see him, pretend you're a fan, go, oh, dude, I love your stand-up. Yeah. Psych. Gun out. Oh, I'm going to dress up like up. a 17-year-old girl, dude, go into his place, <laughs> fuck him, and then steal a bunch of shit. Wait, wait, he doesn't He doesn't fuck underage girls, though. No, dude, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. But I'll is, actually, actually, that's funny. He's so Chris is so far from being a, a pedophile. I'll have just turned 18 that morning. <laughs> yeah, that was your birthday? Yeah, Chris go. is so far from being a pedophile. Everyone should know this on the internet, yeah. by the way. He won't fuck someone under 60. Yeah. No chance. No. <laughs> no, I've never seen Chris hanging out with a woman under 60 in my entire life. He has that 43-year, yeah, he stays 43 years outside of 
possible pedophilia. Yeah, he loves that. And I that's mean, that I, 60-year I think range. that's to keep him safe the more famous he gets. You know? Now, he will doctor those 60-year-old chicks up. I've seen him with put fake tits on a 60-year-old lady. Fake teeth? Her I saw carriage wo- could barely hold him up. I saw a woman with new eyes. He yeah. had a woman with brand new eyes. Yeah. I said, how did she get new eyes? He's like, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. did that thing that he does. Yeah, <laughs> I, just, I don't. I, I don't. You know, do I like? Do I like Chris D'Elia? <laughs> you know, <laughs> he's like mustard. Yeah, he's like mustard. If it's on there, it's I, fine. I'll I'll have it. But yeah, yeah. if it's, uh, I'll put it on every. Yeah, now I'll put and it on then. once in a while. But usually, I'm when I see it, I go, Ugh, uh, that's fuck. gonna fucking that's gonna annoy me. That's Can't believe somebody f- bought that. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe somebody bought that. Anyway, fuck, you, dude, any, anyway well, the here's truth what is. pisses me off, dude. If whatever their deal is, that it's like, because we, we've been waiting. Yeah. It's been like an exciting thing. Yeah. And now. And now, it, and now, now we, here we are in the new year, and that's what we get, which I feel like is a, yeah. a real big ripoff for them to say that out loud. Yeah. To say that it's just a tie. Yeah. I think that's really sad. But I know what it is. They're fucking with you. That's that's, that's I mean, what I think. To be I honest, wonder if they're just clever. joking and if they wanted us to have that and then Chris is really going to win. No, that's not true. What they're doing is they're setting up a tiebreaker. I mean, neither of those guys are smart enough to do it. Chin might be doing some shit like well, that. Well, that's what I said. That's why I looked at Chin and I was like, dude, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, Chin knows. And he said nothing. Chin denies everything, bro. He's like a... But the way he said nothing... If he's he's an inmate. He's like a captive. Yeah. He just, well, I see nothing. If Chim, yeah, you know, <laughs> if Chin is in radio, jail, if no he's radio. in prison, he just gets pushed around from crew to crew. Oh yeah, he just chameleons around from crew to crew. Well, dude, yesterday he had long hair. Today he has no hair. Yeah, well, how did that? How do you even do that? That's impossible. Electricity. <laughs> yeah, guy seems like he's out of his mind. But let's get back to it, dude. There's yeah. no way you don't play Louis C.K. in a biopic. Yeah, that's gonna be bio-pay. me. I'm gonna play Louis. I'm gonna play Louis. But you know what? Uh, we talked about this before a little bit. I'm, I was mad. I had to. I had to get on Instagram this morning and talk about it because I was mad. All this shit about Louis. I think it's bullshit. I'm being serious now for a minute. I think it's so annoying. You can't record people in comedy fucking clubs. Yeah. And this is not about me. People got mad at me when I talked about it one time and they were like, oh, what are you supporting Louis? I'm like, you're, you're missing the point. Yeah. I am a stand-up comic. This is going to be my whole life. I don't want people to have the ability to record me when I don't want it out there. Yeah. Dude, that's bullshit. I don't want that shit out in the world. It's not ready. If I put it online myself and you're like, fuck you and want to criticize it, fine. I put it out there. You can't do that when I'm working on shit. Yeah. And I said this, I've said this about 10 times. I think I said it over on on, uh, on uh, Dipshit and Doofus's podcast. Uh, I said to them- Shark Tank, what is their podcast what, called? What Fire in called? the Kid. Fire, Fire in, the, in the Child? Yeah, I think so. Why do they have a kid in the name? That's fucking know. gross. Very illegal. It's not going to help me in court a couple years from yeah. now. You had a podcast called Fighter and the, and the Child, <laughs> yeah, is it? Yeah, okay, yeah. You're, you're going to prison. Yeah, and the one guy's low on plasma. You get that email? Yeah. Brian asking for people for fucking He's begging, plasma. he's begging, begging. <laughs> He goes, can I come talk uh, to you for a minute about some opportunities I have for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a pyramid scheme for plasma. Yeah, dude. No, Rest so, in so, platelets, bro. So I'm I, out. I, I got mad at the recording shit, and I don't really give a fuck about Louis as a... He can do whatever he wants, but I said this before. If the, if the Westboro Baptist Church can protest a soldier's funeral, and if the Westboro Baptist Church can protest the funerals of cops or service people because they have the right to, then Louis C.K. has the right to go perform in a room for people who pay for it. Yeah. End of story. Yeah. It's America, dude. People that go, he should never be allowed to perform again. W- what are you even talking about? Yeah, this is not that country, bro. This this is a you're. If people want to pay tickets to go see his ass, they should be able to go see him. They should be able to go see him. End and, of story. That's it. That, right. that, that's just how it goes. And if you don't want like him, if you don't like him, you don't want to see it. Don't hear it. Don't support him. Support Theo. Support me. Go see comics you like. And I'll say this about Louis, man. I've only seen. I've, I've maybe I met Louis once. Um, I met him. Th- I've met him a few times. When he was coming around the store and yeah. he was selling out the main room, I was on his shows twice, two or three times. Adam was. Did like, you ever interact with him ever? We just said hello and yeah. we chatted a minute. I mean, he yeah. probably would know me from a fucking hole in the right. wall. Right. Same. Same. Exactly. But it's. But it's. But. But still, I don't have an opinion about him as a man. I don't know him. Right. You know what I'm saying? When someone goes, "What do you think about this person?" Uh, we love to. People love to go. Oh, I. I. I feel this way. You're like, do you know him? If you, if you don't, I don't really know him. Yeah, I don't really feel. No, anything I don't really know him. I got a vibe from. Him. He just seemed like kind of. This was at the climax. He, he, you know, he kind of had like a holier than thou type of vibe. Is that how he, that's what you felt to? What yeah, yes. to you? But I also have no idea. Like the pressures, you know, if people were constantly coming. I'm sure. Yeah. Every, this was when he was. You know, this was two years ago when he, he was, was on the fucking tip top. The only one up there, really. Yeah, he was solo. I mean, because Chappelle had was slowly. Uh, poking his head back around yeah. the store. You remember he would like come into town and do one night and then ghost and then never see him again. Who's Chappelle? 
Yeah. yeah. I feel like he would come in and then I would not see him again. Right. He wasn't even in town. No, yeah, he now he's stay. everywhere. Yeah, now he's now he's hanging around. But so Lou so I that's all I remember is that he just but he that's when he was doing a new hour every year and it was like a thing, you know, yeah, people he, were excited oh, he was, about. He was on fire. This is how funny it is when people capitalize on bullshit. People have been putting up sets of Louis that aren't from that night wow. that are like whatever sets because they want hits and views. So so I said this on the bullshit on on my Instagram. If you hate him so much, why are you supporting it then? Yeah. Because all you're doing is creating more for him. You're creating more shit for him to like to get revenue around his name. Right. Well, he can also lay claims to all of those of course he and can. pull the revenue yes. all from all those channels in in for himself. That's one thing you may not know about YouTube. Like, say if there's like even a segment of this podcast that somebody clips and uses in some like montage or something, right. we can lay a claim um, to rev a share revenue from that that other video that somebody yeah, but else. You should made. be able to. That's your yeah. that's your that's your content. But now, what about this? So. So, but he got up. He joked about the Parkland survive. He joked about Parkland shooting. Did you get um, my text? He said, yeah, "Play that, play that, that." Because that this literally this is only two minutes. It'll say it, it's it's the exact things that people are mad about. Because there was some other shit that made its way on the internet. But these two things, these two jokes, he got mad. They got mad about was the um, the insensitivity of the Parkland shooting and um, uh, uh, pr pr pronouns. How people want to be addressed. He he, he heard okay. them third that this this is probably the best audio. So I'm a little disappointed in the younger generation, honestly, because I'm 51 years old, and when I was like 18 to my 20s, I mean, we were idiots. We were getting high, doing mushrooms and shit, and then older people were like, you gotta get your shit together, and we were like, eh, f you. And I was kind of excited to be in my 50s and see people in their 20s and be like, they're crazy. These kids are nuts, but they're not, they're fucking eh. They're just boring. And tell them you shouldn't say that. What the? What are you, an old lady? What the? Are you doing? <laughs> yeah, that's not appropriate. <laughs> you, you're a child. I don't know. They testify from, in front of Congress. These kids. Like, what the? <laughs> what are you doing? You're, you're young. You should be crazy. You should be unhinged. Not in a suit saying I'm here to tell <laughs> you. You're not interesting. Because you went to a high school where kids got shot? Why does that mean I have to listen to you? Why does that make you interesting? You didn't get shot. You pushed some fat kid in the way. And now I gotta listen to you talking? But the point of all that shit is, um, all comics feel the same way. Whether or not you, you don't like, you like Louis C.K. or not, nobody wants to be filmed. Like, yeah. Nobody wants to be filmed unless I want to be fucking filmed. Right. But that's the other thing. They're, they're itching... For people to get mad, people want to get triggered so fucking bad. The Tiffany Haddish thing to me is hilarious. Yeah. That people are like, you they want to make news out of nothing. Right. You know how many people bomb on New Year's? We've all done New Year's shows. You know how many times I've seen crowds get so crazy the comic can't perform because you're they're they're shit faced out of their fucking mind, yelling in the middle of your setup. Oh like, yeah. So so Oh, I raised money one time. I was gonna piss into a speaker one time in Louisville on stage. <laughs> on, on New Year's. Yeah. If I'd have got a hundred bucks, man, I was gonna end my whole career. I could have been electrocuted. <laughs> But thank God we only got about 70 bucks. And this is before GoFundMe. This is back when you just had to ask everybody in the room. That was, you know? yeah, that was just room fund. Yeah, the room <laughs> fund. Just, Can hey. anybody give me money? Yeah, yeah just hands give me out. something. <laughs> um, but I think, like, the Louis thing is interesting because it's like, yeah, it's not fair to film people. And who can, Judd Apatow came out and slammed him. People were talking about He this. hit him hard, yeah. But you, yeah. Know what, but you know what it is, though? We, we, our stance is different. Our stance says, I don't want anybody to film me. People, these people that are mad at Louis are still mad about what he did. Right. I, like, that's the point that people are missing. They think that what we're doing is defending who he is and his actions. I'm just defending the fact that you can't record a comic when they're working on shit. Right. You need to get over the fact that he's going to perform. Nick, can we see that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Judd came after him on Twitter. Okay. This hacky, unfunny, shallow routine is just a symptom of how people are afraid to feel empathy. It's much easier to laugh at our most vulnerable... Than to look at their pain directly and show them and love and concern. Yeah, that he's all angry. So I guess he's saying what Apatow is saying that it's easier for, uh, instead of like uh, approaching the Park Lane thing with apathy and concern. Yeah. And empathy, it's that what Louis doing is I guess maybe going after like low hanging fruit. I don't. I didn't see it that way at all. I saw it as he's just joking about something that's a really serious thing, which is what every comic is doing, and good comics do usually. Of course, yeah. You what, know? Are you, what are you going to say? I mean, I, I, or I, a comic like him does. It's the same thing that Chris Rock does. I mean, I was there when Chris Rock told a joke. 
you know, about the um, the Boston bombing at the marathon. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a great joke. Like, it doesn't mean that the Boston bombing is funny. Right. And I don't think that that's what this is. I mean, Judd definitely... I don't know why he's going after him, though. That's that's the biggest thing. I don't know right. why comics go... Like, why, why do you care? He, but Judd also gets grandfathered in as a comedian. If you look at Sam Tripley's, can you bring up that tweet? I stand with Louis C.K. Judd, you, did you call out Lena Dunham when she admitted to molesting her sister or falsely accusing a man of sexual assault in college? No, of course not. If anyone knows hacky, it's you, exclamation point. You used a cheat code to get on stage to be one of us. We won't forget this. That was Sam Tripoli that said that. Yeah. And I remember whenever Judd was touring with like Schumer that she would always make fun of like how just not funny he was you judd know? yeah <laughs> just like and judd's gonna be there you know <laughs> here's my here's my thing about the whole judd thing that i didn't understand i saw that yesterday too i don't why are people why are comics trying to burn their own right that's what i don't understand it like why would you do that like it's not i think I it think doesn't that, give him anything right but i think it's part of it it's, it shows a little bit that he's not as into the comic cloth as a you know like or maybe he just wants to keep a stance with with his viewership of of staying in line with who he's always been to them that's more what it is to me it's more like bro if you've spent your whole career uh and this isn't about judd i'm saying if if somebody spends their entire career with an image to uphold and right. that's who they are to their fans they have to go that route and not deviate because they've committed to a thing but why even go in there why e he didn't have to say anything no i agree but you look at how many comics don't say anything that's the biggest thing to me is like look at how many ca look at how many huge comics like the biggest selling comics in the world, right? Right. Chris Rock said nothing. Chappelle hasn't said anything yet. Uh, Brian Regan, you know? Right. Uh, Sebastian. You're looking at the top selling comedians in the world, the highest grossing comics. They stay quiet. Yeah. Because they know better. Because yeah. they're like, what, what, what is it going to earn me? Right. What's it going to earn me to talk shit right. about, you know what I'm saying? And maybe it's just some, yeah, maybe some of it's just like a novice kind of move by... You know, of Judd. That, that, but that made me wonder, I don't know Judd, you know, like. I know him a little bit. He I know, pops I know him, around the store and seems like, you know. I know him a little bit. Uh, and he, him and I are on great terms. He's always been a cool dude to me. Yeah, same you know? here. I, 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 I don't like know Judd. Why he would I just say don't that. know why he goes after someone right. like that because it's just, you don't need to. Yeah. You just don't need that shit. Like, all that does is invite, first of all, it, it's, it's, it's pandering to people that are already upset. And then it's inviting enemies. Right. It's inviting fucking haters. Yeah. Like I spend my entire fucking career trying to push away hater bullshit. Yeah. All I want to do is all I want to do is be with people that are fucking mm -hmm. into, in, into into our fun, into having a good time. Yeah. But that invites haters. Joy babies. Yeah. All you're doing is inviting haters to go, come on in, say some foul ass shit about me. Yeah. I just don't you don't need that shit. Do you think I wonder if part of it was is like for some you know, if there's some publicity thing or something, like if he's, you know, no, like I, you I, never know what the next foot is going to be. If there's, I think Judd is aligned with a group of people who are, con are con publicly condemning Louis C.K. Right. I think he's just a part of a group of people that are that are doing that. And do, so, do you think that it went? Because you know, do you think it went so deep that Louis like just said like, I just wonder if he was such an a hole to people or if he did other things like I behind mean, the scenes that we don't know yeah. that made like people that are bigger fixtures in the I've industry heard stories. angry like I've heard Apatow. stories yeah I've, I've heard stories that, that Louis ha has, has made a lot of enemies I've heard these stories yeah but again I don't know him like yeah. that so I'm not going to go out of my way to fucking start shit yeah. I don't know that motherfucker. So people could be like, he yeah. was, he, you weren't around, Santino. That's a good point. Theo, you, you guys weren't around. You, when you guys weren't around, he was a piece of shit to me. It's like, okay, then that's on you. But do you feel like at this point in your career, as successful as some of those people are, yeah. you need to shit on him? Let me tell you something. Right. In our come up generation of comics and our, our group, you know, that are growing and growing fan bases, in 10 years, when you're on top of the world, if you find out someone in our group did some fucked up shit like that, would you waste your time, gain, after gaining all that success and fans, would you waste your time shitting on a guy that you used to know? No. Unless, Even if he was a piece of shit. Right. No, I don't think I would unless that, now that's what makes me think, there must have been something, something else that happened, that happened, to happened them. between them. Sure. That's but, what but, I think But, but let was. me tell you something. Even if, let's just say we find out in 10 years that Shab has been, you know, selling kids online. Yeah. Because that could be. That could be a thing. And then wearing a lot of their clothes yeah. <laughs> into the studio. So Easily. let's just say we find out some fucked up shit about okay. Shab. Shab in 10 is years. doing stuff like that. I could see. I, I mean, I would hate to see that, but I could imagine it. it could, it's very possible. I'll let my mind go there. Continue. I, sh 
TMZ hits us up in the parking lot. Oh. Theo, what's up? Theo, did you hear about Shab, dude? Congratulations on your world tour of all your arenas and shit. By the way, you're fucking killing it, Theo. I know you're doing your thing. But did you hear about Shab? Did you do you know what happened to Brendan? Yeah, you know, I heard about it. And um, kids, dude, he was selling kids online. What, what do you have to say about that? You know, um, it. I wish him well. That's it. <laughs> I wish him well. That's great. I don't need to take time to shit on Shab. Yeah. And even if Shab was a piece of shit to me on the way up. I still won't. Right. I would just be happy. I would be like, oh, dude, well, that guy got what he deserves, and I'll just sit in my good place where I am mm -hmm. doing my thing. You think there hasn't been people that have been shitty to me on the way up? Oh, yeah. And and some of the people that have treated me like shit over the years, mm -hmm. I see them kind of slipping and not doing well. Yeah. I just get to sit back and see that. Yeah. I don't have to fucking parade around the internet being like, you know who fucking is eating it right now? No, I'll just go, hey, man, oh, well, I'm going to keep doing my thing. Yeah. I'll keep going up. Yeah, it doesn't help, man. It, it, but now, do you think that Louis responds to this? Do you think Hell he's no. He, ha he can't win. He can't win. Right. In the same way when he wrote the apology letter, people said it wasn't good enough. Uh, he didn't say the right things. He didn't apologize the right way. And and they might I be right, by did. the way. And they might be right. Their opinion is... is you, you I could, thought you it could, seemed like the apology letter, it, it was... I mean, he's an artful communicator. He, you know, he, that's one thing they, that he, people he feel is. like he didn't say I'm sorry. I, right. I think whatever it was, I don't really remember right, specifically. Right, yeah, but the, but the point is, he can't win. Right. He can't fucking win. If he responds to this, can't win. He can't win. Cannot win. No matter what. If he says people shouldn't record my sets, do you think if find he, some shit about that? If he goes on tour in a year around America, does he sell out? Sell out. He goes? Sell out. Sell out. 100%. Sell out. Sell. He will. He'll sell out so fucking much. It it, it will only anger people that hate him more that they might go see his ass. Right, but do you then think, so do you think that this is the industry that is hating him, or do you think that this is just... Industry. Dude, you know America? Yeah. Um, America. America. Donald Trump, America. What are we yeah. even talking about? This is the inside baseball industry, leftist, elitist, liberal, coastal people going, punish, 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 and they, right. and, and, and they don't look inward. A lot of these people that are throwing stones at him have a lot of secrets. Yeah. And do, uh, and it's probably a lot of those people knew like a lot of this. I, I don't know. But if you go ask somebody where I come from in Chicago in the Midwest. Yeah. When I go talk to people back home about shit, when I go, hey, man, what do you guys feel about Louie? A lot of people will go, yeah, I think that's fucked up what he did. That's fucked up. And I go, I agree. That is fucked up shit what he did to those girls, those people. And, they, and I said, do you think he should be banished from performing? They're like, no, that's crazy. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. That people want him to still perform. The country will still support him. Yeah. The business can b slash you down, you know. Do you do you think he um, do you think he tours again? I think he does. One hundred. I think that's what he's doing right now. I think that whole set was a setup. I think that whole set, it, oh, he didn't wow. plan it, but I think it was a setup for him to go. If I think he consciously went, if this gets out, it's only going to set me up to get an audience. To, it'll it, it will it'll be a line in the sand of either you're going to support him from here on out or you're not and i and i guarantee you if you go on the fucking internet there's a lot of people going this is great this is like i want him to come back what the fuck i saw it on the thing i saw it on the twitter uh, on the original twitter uh, audio i saw a million comments my boy he's back i can't wait to see him again yeah. people like him yeah Be but just the business is in its own head you know a bus this, the business of hollywood is like a little boy in a room with with all of his toys and if like he stubs a toe on a toy, he's like, <laughs> his toy, and then he throws it outside of the room, and then he still gets to play with the little toys that he likes. Well, he's a little brat. The business is a little brat. It's a little bratty fucking kid. But I, I can't imagine that the business can't see that he could make so much money for them again. They will, but the but the people that will operate with him will be will be on the low. Right. Yeah. People that'll people that'll operate with Louis, the the, the bookers, the promoters. They have to be on the low if they're here. Mm -hmm. And if they're not here, then they can be loud. Do you... He could be... You know what he could do? For real, if he wanted to fucking walk straight into the fire? Mm -hmm. He should just align himself with a, a more rightist sensibility and be like, fuck it, I'll be the comic for Fox News. Yeah. <laughs> like, fuck it. If he really wanted to do it, if he wanted to just say fuck it to LA and to New York, yeah. he could just walk right out into the middle of the country and sell out forever. Yeah. Dude, there's guys selling out that we don't even talk about anymore that still sell out around the country that we don't even know where they are, what they're doing. Yeah. They're just touring the country, selling the fuck out. Yeah. We just get to see this, you know? 
Yeah, I'm just curious because I, I feel like the thing about a guy with a guy like Louis is once you get to that level of ego and have that much influence and that much power, that's power really that's big that he power. had. Right. I mean, when you're coming in front of people and running past them and jerking off, I mean, he run come? It's hard to do that, but that's a fucking power move. That is power. You know? He's just jerking like, off. Like, hey, running. look at these socks, and then they see <laughs> you're naked, and they look at the socks first, then they see you're naked, and then you come. Do you, you remember know? that game that boys would play where they'd be like, yo, what time is it? And they'd wrap their nuts on their watch and yeah. shit like that. Yeah. yeah. That was pretty preeminent for Louis. You think he was doing that when he was young? Oh, I got some gum and, yeah. you know. Oh, what is that gum? Yeah. Yeah, and it's there always There was always nuts. one kid who looked at it for too long. Yeah. <laughs> it was where you're like, oh, look at this piece of gum. And everyone's like, oh. And there's one that's like, oh. <laughs> is it grape? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do you, but do, I'm just, with that much ego, I don't feel like Louis gives up. Like there's going to be that thing where he just will continue to I'll try. I'll say this, he'll, he'll never stop. Do you think he'll start the tour in, in Parkland? <laughs> like in that town in Parkland, Florida. <laughs> no, I think he'll start. I'll th Would that be crazy and sell it out? How about sell this? out an arena in Parkland? Yeah, yeah. You know what I think he? You know what I think he will do for real? What? I think he'll start. He'll do a world tour. I, I, th I think he'll leave the states. Oh yeah. Because I think there's people that overseas that want to see him more than you think. Yeah. That are like, come here, come here and do it. Oh yeah, in Saudi Arabia, dude, jerking off in front of a group of women. That's a. That's like the let's make a deal over there. You get a tax break for doing that. Yeah. Yeah. You can write oh, that on your tax. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy, you know? Yeah, for real. It's so funny how we're like, we have to say, you know, like every, it's sometimes it's funny in America how it's like everybody is welcome here, you know, but we have to have, but then at the same time, those same people will be like slamming the way that we behave in this country. Yeah. But then also the people that they are totally just willy nilly uh, uh, willing to let in behave the way that we behave mm -hmm. that they hate yeah, exactly but just because they're from somewhere else they can come in That's oh right. you're a murderer from fucking you know slackadakia come on come in come on in bucko. yeah we need guys like you we need more slackadakians yeah, by the way dude. that is something we should talk about we, we need just more have all these old white murderers and black murderers I'm tired of old white murderers yeah. man it's getting really old we need some slackadakian speaking of crazy shit like that I was in Vegas for mm -hmm. New Year's like a fool oh really yeah for what uh, you know Little Dicky, the rapper? Do you know him? Yes. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a friend, and he was performing there. Okay. And uh, we went there, and uh, my lady and a friend, um, and another friend of ours, they wanted to see Gwen Stefani do, like, one of her last shows. So I bucked up, and I went and saw Gwen Stefani, and then I went and saw my boy Little Dicky. Oh, hold on. <laughs> I didn't buck up and go see Gwen. Gwen Stefani, I wasn't, I, 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 I wasn't really... Leave a message and I'll call you back. They I didn't do that. it. Yeah, she did Spiderwebs. She did? Yeah, of course. I love, good song. I, I love Gwen Stefani, but <laughs> yeah. I wasn't like... I wasn't like, gotta see her on New Year's Eve in other Vegas. 40 songs, it's like, what are these songs? Well, then she's, she's got some cuts. She does? She's got some cuts. Is Gwen Stefani the lady from The Voice, too? Yes. Oh, that's cool. And she's married to the dude that's on The Voice. No way. Adam Levine? Nope. Blake Shelton. Blake Shelton. Oh, really? Did he come out? Nah, he didn't. He was back drinking, I'm sure. Dude, come fucking out. It's like 30 steps and do a hit. I know, I'm mad. I was mad. I was mad. I was a So then off. what? Then you and your boy, you're out with Little Dicky in Vegas? Then we went out with Little Dicky in Vegas. Yeah, we had a good time. And then we ended up at the Chainsmokers Hotel Room. Do you know who they are? Yeah, that band, yeah. yeah I know yeah. you're extremely band dropping right now. Yeah, well, I did what I did. And how big was their hotel room? It's funny, it wasn't as big as I thought it was going to be. Really? Yeah, because they were like, we're going to the Chainsmokers party. I was like, it's going to be fucking wild as shit. I was amped on the bus. I was lit up. I was on the stripper pole doing my thing. Everybody's laughing. We get there and I'm like, Chainsmokers hotel room. We get VIP'd up there and everyone's kind of quiet. They had a tray of dessert out. I was like, this ain't it. Wow. <laughs> when you say dessert, are you talking drugs and stuff like that? No, they had real, they had ice cream. Ooh. Ice cream and milkshakes. I'm talking about some snow. Dude. I know there was no drugs. I couldn't believe there was no drugs, dude. I'd let somebody fart a gram into my veins at a chain smoker party, dude. Whatever it not, gets it into my it, system. It was not what I thought it was going to be. Wow. That was just like a and everyone. The liquor was like gone. It was kind of like low. Key. It was just super low key. Everyone was trying to be cool. I don't know if you have ever been to these parties that like. Yeah. Everyone's trying so hard to be cool. No one's having fun anymore. Oh yeah, yeah. You know. By the way, nobody ate the ice cream but me and my buddy Jeff. That's California. That's Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah, we ate the ice cream. It was a table. It was a table filled with ice cream, like individual bowl, wrap bowls of ice cream. Oh yeah. Nobody touched it. Me oh, and Jeff, yeah. pff, all over it. Oh wow. Milk chocolate chip. I was dipping in everything. Really? Both you guys are dipping out of the same one? Hell yeah, dude. Oh, I know Jeff. No. We get tested together. I wouldn't do that with him. But the chain smokers were there, and the dude was talking to Dicky. And um, they were chatting it up, and he kept throwing eyes at us because we kept eating ice cream. Mm -hmm. And he was kind of giving me like, 
No, that was kind of... Well, dude, you see a ginger fucking thumbing through your dairy, you fucking... <laughs> you gotta shut him down, you know? Who let this leprechaun I mean, in to eat ice cream? Yeah, there's old... I like, just came for some ice cream! <laughs> and I skip out. There's old limericks about that. Yeah, there is. The, the leprechaun ice, the oh, ice cream yeah, leprechaun. Dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so well, I, was eating, I was eating this fucking ice cream, and then we, I, I was bummed out. We had to get out of there. I was like, yeah. I gotta go gamble, man. This is... I don't like Hollywood parties, and this is no dis- disrespect to them. I don't like Hollywood parties where no one's having fun. Yeah, it's like why are we? All, why is everybody trying That's to be cool? That's most of Hollywood, though. It's the it's it's to look like there's fun. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It's why at one thirty a.m. Hollywood shuts down. It's like it's like let's just get the appearance that there's joy here. Yeah, and then get these images out in the rest of America. Usually, people go to Vegas to have fun. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. just where a lot of the fun happens. Yeah, but they live there. I'm sure those guys live. They do a residency. I'm sure they they fucking live in those hotels. Chainsmokers live there. Oh yeah. Oh wow. I'm, I'm sure they, they live residency. they live there and here because they do they do. Uh, a bunch of those guys, they do that. Yeah. They go out every weekend or whatever. Yeah. So they kind of live, they live there for four days, That's three crazy. days. Yeah. I uh, I got stuck in the Vegas strip on New Year's one time in the strip, like walking in the street yeah. at New Year's. I was trying to get to my friends and I took like a wrong way to walk. And there's literally, there was a million people. You're stuck. There was a million people in the street, nowhere to walk, everybody drinking those huge fucking Yards drinks. of fucking, yeah. Yes. Dude, one guy was running around, he had this big thing and for like a buck, he put it around your waist, you could piss in it dude that's smart yeah that's it really smart business the, out of the blue this i saw a beautiful guy, I saw a guy poop came. on the strip really yeah a guy was pooping on the strip dude i saw a guy in india one time pooping get hit by a fucking taxi mid poop yeah <laughs> did he live i don't know bro i don't stay around after that yeah you gotta go <laughs> i was cruising bro yeah peace and, but that's like that's nothing and that's nothing in india but bro. people poop in the streets all the time overseas yes. america has these weird laws that you can't poop in the street yeah but i don't know why not yeah, you should. If you got to poop, you have to poop. I think it's strange that people feel shame about pu- public pooping outside. Right. You should be able to poop outside. If you have to piss really bad, you can piss outside. Well, most of my audience knows. I grew up in it. They had this boy down the street from me, this kid Mario, and he, in order to hang out with them, he made he had me, a brother named Luigi. No, he didn't, dude. No, and <laughs> wasn't a plumber. We're gonna leave that joke in. <laughs> um, but he would shit in his own yard and make me bury it in order to be able to hang out with him, right? And Man, so you were his poop bitch. I wasn't a poop bitch. I was a young man, and I was. Why would you bury another man's poop if he asked you to do it? What was the benefit? Cause he was a tough kid, and there was otherwise. He was gonna whoop your ass. Yeah, there okay. was no real way to hang out. You so know? you were a poop bitch. I wasn't a poop bitch. I was a guy who would, you know, bury a man's poop. Otherwise, he beat you up. I would say I worked in like janitorial services. <laughs> I would say you, that you didn't get paid though. So I you didn't got, really work. You were doing an internship in janitorial service. I didn't. I got paid in the fact that we got to, you know, be around each other. Were you other a poop bitch intern? And enjoy each other's company? No. I was first in line. Apprentice. Yeah. You were an apprentice. I was more of a, I would say. Were there other people that buried his poop? There were not that I knew of. You were the key poop bearer. I would say, yeah. You were tip top. Well, I was. I <laughs> That's would, kind of privilege at that point. I would say I was a colon concierge. That's what I would say. A colon concierge. Yeah. Ah, so this guy was an shit. excrement excavator. Yeah, That's there what you, you go, dude. <laughs> well, this guy would shit, and I'd have to hide it in his yard, right? <clears throat> would his parents ever? Did his parents ever know that he was? They pooping had in the to have known, dude. His mother was a librarian, smart. <laughs> you know, and so she had to have known. There's no way you bury 200 of some guys' poops in their own yard. Does that cu- trickle down? You think that his father did that? You think he learned that from his parents? I'll say this: they had one of the best gardens anywhere in town. I will <laughs> say that, bro. Rose bushes 30 feet high, bro, encapsulating the house, dude. Just all <laughs> you that got young, a lot of fertilizer. Oh, that young lizer, bro, in the in the right. fucking ground. Right. Well, so here's what happened: was eventually, and, and then he would let me hang out with him, dude. This boy Mario Rafino, and then he ended up dying. He ate a bunch of pills and drove a boat into an embankment. And here's the thing. On purpose. Was he fucked up? Was no, he was he partying? Middle of the night. Oh, middle he was the night, but... in a speedboat and hit the side of an interstate like one of those posts that oh, goes down shit. in the water. Yeah. He was high as fuck. I don't know if he was, but he was always he had a he had that vigilante in him. You know, he own always, a boat. These people had some money yeah. to own a boat. It was like a boat that you would fish out of. Ah, uh, like yeah, a little little tiny little fish boat. Yeah, and some of the fish would get in and they'd be like, "I'm not staying in this boat," you know, and jump <laughs> back in the that. water. Yeah, <laughs> the fish knew better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is this Mario's boat? Flop right back out. But and I wrote, I remember I wrote his parents a letter when that happened and told them about that about Just, that experience about about him pooping in the yard and me burying it. Yeah, they didn't write you back hundreds of times. They never wrote me back. <laughs> I, I feel like that letter might be framed at their house. And I wanted to be a pallbearer, I remember. And I, because I, in my mind, I wanted to put him in the ground one last time. That was, <laughs> <laughs> that was cold. That's a true story, man. And I wrote that in the letter, and they never wrote me back, man. And it was sad, though. They, he had two beautiful young sisters, and they. No kids, though. You know, no kids, I don't think, though. But then there also was a rumor in our town that he'd hit a homeless person with his truck, and, and she died, a woman. 
and that they he hit her. Yeah. Well, then he deserves to die. Well, he killed somebody. Okay. He was yes. He and a truck. He killed someone, someone on purpose. Killed. There was a rumor. It was yeah. Purpose. But if it's a rumor, it, rumors in town are probably true. There was a kid we used to fish with that was fucking crazy. I can't remember his name, but he would take bullheads mm -hmm. and and he'd catch bullheads. Yeah, that's an Illinois term. Yeah, dude. he would take bullheads and he would throw them against the wall as hard oh as he could. God. Psycho kid. Psycho. He would fucking catch fish and throw them as hard as he could against like the bridge, underbridge, concrete walls, just to fucking kill them. People would stand there and awe because he was a big fat kid. I mean, you're nervous around big fat kids when you're young because yeah. you know they might fight you or eat you. And a bullhead is a it's a small catfish. Some people don't know. You probably know. But yeah, you bullheads. Don't know. Yeah, he would, he would kill the bullheads. Anyway, I heard he ended up dying. He got into a car accident and died. Well, look, man, the and Lord said, remembers what, what, what you do. <laughs> yeah. You think you'll get beat with fish? Well, people in the think they look at the Lord. They're like, oh, he just said, you know, he has a nice robe and he does all this shit. But the you know he doesn't wear robes anymore. He doesn't because they're culturally insensitive. He got a lot of beef. The Lord, <laughs> yeah, the Lord, got, bro. the Lord got a lot of beef. The Lord wears it all, bro. No, he doesn't. He's he's actually <laughs> really? yeah. He's going nude now. Oh wow. Yeah, but you can't see his genitals. Is what I was reading this article. Oh yeah, yeah. You can't see his genitals because it's just it's not it's too much for the human eye. Do you think in the future we'll have a, like a new genitalia is going to start to emerge or mm -mm. this one will stick around? Really, you it's, think it's been around for a long enough time? The I feel two like we have. I, th I feel like if, if we've made it this far, uh, how long have humans walked the earth? 2,000 years, I think. 2018, <laughs> 2019. You know what? I take it back. In 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 10,000 years? Yeah. yeah, we'll have some weird ass shit. We'll what have dicks think? on. I think we'll have dicks on different parts of our body. Or we'll be able to ejaculate from different areas. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Like you could, you know, you sneeze come or I feel like you might be able to spit it. I feel like at some point you could sh shake up and spit into somebody. Oh, I feel I, like the genitalia might change. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious to see what could change in the future. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah. I think so. I think, gen I think, I think female genitalia will stay the same. Yeah. You know, sometimes you have, you, you need to have a, a skill and you don't have time to go to college. Dude, how long does it take to go to college? Four years and you probably have to knock a chick up. Oh, that's hectic. Now there's something called Skillshare. It's basically a place. It's a learning platform, actually. It's not a place. And it has over 20,000 classes in business, social media, design, technology, marketing. You, you can take all those classes right there on Skillshare. So whether you're trying to, you know, get deeper into your already, you know, already, you know, real um, – crevassy skill set or whether you're just trying to learn something new Skillshare has it think about something you can't do right now and suddenly you can and that's what Skillshare does for you so join the millions of students already learning on Skillshare today with a special offer just for our TPW listeners get two months of Skillshare for just 99 cents that's right, Skillshare is offering TPW listeners two months of unlimited access to over 20,000 classes for just 99 cents. Go to Skillshare.com slash Theovon. And that is Skillshare.com slash Theovon. This Louie thing, man, it's interesting. It's got in your head, huh? Well, yeah, it's just interesting. I'm just a, like, and then I'm like, you know, it's, um, and then a lot of people would, yeah, it's like people would be afraid to say anything about Apatow because people would be worried about their space in the industry, you know? Well, yeah, but that, but I said my two cents on Judd. I, I like Judd. I yeah. said, we're cool. Judd and I are cool people. Yeah, Judd's always, anytime I've ever and seen let me him, tell you something. nice. He, him and I talked yeah. about doing a podcast, you know, him coming on the podcast and stuff, so. Yeah, he goes on a lot of people's podcasts. I like Judd. Yeah. I said that before. I'm not, I didn't slander Judd. I don't know why Judd or anybody wants to take shots at Louie. That's my point. Right. I'm not taking shots at Judd. I don't fucking. I'm not on that. Right. I'm saying I don't know why people feel like they need to. Well, do you? But do, and also, do you feel I just like don't feel like we need to? There's something. Oh, I agree. It's Unless like, you've got, like you said, if Judd and Louie have some old beef, well, then maybe that makes more sense. But there's comics. There's a few comics that I have heavy, heavy beef with that I do not like as people. Yeah. But let me tell you something. If they go down in a blaze of fire, I ain't gonna say shit. I might say to you as my friend, right. off the record, but well, what, I'm not about to tweet about him. But what about Dice? Like, Dice is another guy that's gone on. Yeah, but Dice keeps going after people. I don't recently. know why he's doing that. You think it's just part of I feel like for Dice, everything is part of his shtick. Here's what I think it is. This is me being honest. I think Dice is older. He's of the older generation. Yeah. And this kind of, what's going on is upsetting to him a little bit because he's not in it, in it anymore. Yeah. I mean, he probably would fucking hate me hearing, hate me saying that, but that's the fact. Yeah. 
Like Dice ain't on that Forbes list. Well, he's dressed like a damn mechanic at a, from Mad Max. I don't know if you've fucking seen the dude's shit. He's still fucking dressed like that one homeless dude at the gym. It's like if you're, if it's you know like if what I'm saying? If you're dead. I don't like, I, I, he's, that guy has never been friendly around me. He I've brought me on stage one time and was a, he was an asshole about it. Um, never met him one I time. I just got the vibe from him that he, he, he only cares solely about himself. Yeah, look at him, dude. That's insane. It's almost bro. like if your grandfather went in the attic and found a box of stuff he used to wear when he was young, he's like, I'm putting this on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, I'll say this. He, I thought he did a good job in um, A Star is Born. He played... Um, what's her, uh, I didn't see that shit. Not Lena it was Dunham. Good? What's her other girl's name? Star is Club. Born is, is Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga, right? Lady Gaga's dad. He played Lady Gaga's dad. In yeah, it. no, he, he, and I he, thought he did a good job. He was in Blue Ivy, too, right? Wasn't yeah. he in Blue Ivy? And he was good as fucking that. So, yeah, I mean, he's definitely, yeah, there he Wait, is. Wait, that's him right there? Yeah. Yeah, he, uh, yeah. It doesn't look like him, but that is him, yeah. But yeah, it I doesn't look it, like him because he doesn't have his, his uh, chain wallet on. Right. <laughs> I thought, yeah. He looks like a, like a skateboard, to like a skateboard or the, like. I thought you were going to say he looks like a skateboard. Yeah, he it looks, looks like, like a skateboard. skateboard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Too many stickers and shit. <laughs> I don't even know. Yeah. He looks like the ba- he looks like the back of like a like a bumper in high school. That's what he looks like. He just has all these accoutrements on him. You <laughs> too know? much flair. Yeah, bro, too you much got too flare. much flair, bro. Yeah, he looks like he works at a Chili's in fucking a Hell's Kitchen. You know, there's a, <laughs> or in yeah. Hell maybe. There's a there's a bar. like he works at a Chili's at a Slayer concert. <laughs> yeah, that's what it seems. What's like. a, what is that bar with all this shit on the walls? You know what I'm talking about? They make fun of it in shenanigans. Shenanigans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's he's like, he's like a walking shenanigans. Yeah, he, <laughs> too, too many trinkets. Too, too much knickknacks. Yeah, too much knickknacks. There, there that's a, yeah. <laughs> is that is that dice or is, what is that? Oh, uh, that's a bumper. Oh, it's a bumper <laughs> from somebody in Berkeley. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, here's the thing about dice. I, I don't know. But him. He keeps going in he on people. He went on Sebastian. People, man. Yeah, that was fucked up. Right. That was so fucked up because I love Sebastian. Uh, so I don't think Sebastian has one fucking enemy in the game. Mm-mm. I don't think he's done anyone wrong, as far as I fucking know. Someone might have some 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 dirt, but he went after Sebastian for no fucking reason. Yeah. He said something like he stole he he stole his style. Essence, yeah. yeah, essence. It's not that he stole jokes. Right. By the way, the one rule of comics that we all know, you don't steal material. Other than that, if someone says you're like me, bro, everybody's like somebody. Yeah. Everyone is going to feel a little bit like somebody from a prior generation. Right. It's impo- no one's new. What the fuck are we talking about? Right. You go back to the beginning of stand up itself or vaudevillian performances, that's where we take all of our comedic mannerisms from anyway you, yeah you'd be a liar to say that you're completely original is bullshit well and, and uh, there there almost is no originality in some ways i Can't mean happen. you can have your own experience of something but most people we've all shared like you know things that have happened in the world and i remember even like whenever i first started doing comedy um everybody was sounding like mitch hedberg everybody everybody that's so funny everyone's trying to be a one-liner comedian yeah. even just me, like i remember mitch. yeah some agent said to me one time he's like you sound like mitch hedberg you know was like, you did fuck yeah somebody said but it was just everybody was yeah i know but i don't think you i don't ever i could never have seen you be that way but i just think it was just one of the i mean this was right in the beginning but it was like some people it's just that's how you learn to tell a joke you heard it told that way to somebody that you loved yeah i remember the first couple of jokes i wrote i sounded like it to myself looking back I sounded like Swartzen. Oh, wow. Because I loved Nick, dude. I, yeah. I mean, I still love him. I'm saying, I remember, I've said this before. I'm yeah, he's that rare baby bird. Bro, I had his half hour Comedy Central special. Mm-hmm. I have it on VHS. Oh, I've come Because I that, loved brother. it. <laughs> You know I thought I'm it saying? was fucking the most genius. I remember writing jokes sounding like his cadence. Oh, yeah. Because I, I was like, I love the way he does it. But you're always going to sound like somebody. But for Dice to say Sebastian stole his a- act or w- whatever is crazy. If yeah. you listen to them side by side, they're nothing alike. Yeah, I think just because they both seem like they, it's a, you know, are both waiting a, for a subway, you know? <laughs> they both look like dudes that are at a, at the bus. Yeah, yeah. At the bus. Dudes that are angry at the bus stop about they're, something. Matt, and they might drive the bus. The bus might show up and they might have to drive okay. it. Okay. Okay. And the okay. bus. Now, Sebastian, by the way, okay. the, the reason that fucking Dice hates that is because Sebastian is an extremely successful, yeah. um, uh, clean is the wrong word, but... Um, well formatted put together artist artist and dice was more raw and dirty and sebastian isn't like that right they're kind of like the antithesis of each other 100 percent. just because they both have an accent i mean that's like that's that's like saying yeah you know that's like saying that you 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 sound like uh you sound like every southern comedian who has a draw a draw a little bit yeah that's that's crazy so, so if another comedian was like theo vaughn stole my shit yeah i am 
uh, the southern comedian. That's f- that's fucking insane. And I'm not even so the inside of my there's dead muscle in the middle of my tongue. It's from and that's what? why I sound a lot of the way that I do. What do you? Why do you think it's dead? <laughs> hmm? I don't know. Just years, just years of stress. You think it's just the Lord? I mean, I would guess I wouldn't do that. Nobody else would do you, that. You to me. you talk about you talk about the Lord. Do you ever go to church? Yeah, you do. Mm-hmm. How often do you go? I go probably I would say eight times a year. Eight times. Okay, that's pretty good. It's not bad these days. Yeah, most people don't go at all. Yeah. But but you're not, you're, you're oh, Luth- what are you, Lutheran? What would you no, be? No, dude, I would say I'm probably Baptist, you know? Yeah. Somewhere in the mix of white and black Baptist. Do you sing? I'll sing a little, yeah. Yeah, you'll get it. I you see know you what I'm saying, dude? I bet, you, I, get, I bet you get way more into the singing than you would like to lay, lead on. I sing, I sing standing up and I will put my hands up. I'll in put the my air. hands up too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because you feel that. Well, you have to, I mean. It's kind of weird to see someone singing that's not into it. Yeah. You either got to not sing or go or go for it. Oh, there's always that. Uh, there's a whole family that sits down and sings at our church at home sometimes. And They sit? Sit and sing. Yeah, and that's, a, that's that, fucking alarming. Yeah, that's a little weird. That's, that's serial rub. killer yeah. shit. Yeah. Somebody's dying. Jesus loves <laughs> yeah, yeah, me. Yeah. Yes, I know. Somebody's dying. The eyes start bleeding. But what? But then, so bad, uh, what's his name? He also called, a, he brought up Ari recently, which was kind of crazy. Was Dice like, brought, took this? shots at Ari? Yeah. So funny. Ari Ari, Ari's probably the one dude <laughs> know, well, to not yeah. take shots at. Especially because Ari will take shots at Ari right doesn't back. give a fuck. Yeah. Our dude, Howard Stern went toe to toe with Ari. You know how funny that is? The king of, of media and radio, Ari was like the first one to be like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't give a fuck of all people. He'll take shots at anybody who yeah. takes shots at him. Ari never starts wars, but man, he'll fucking he'll he would love he loves to fight. Yeah. He's the first guy to be like, okay, you want to talk shit? Because Ari doesn't have anything to lose. He's like that. He has that same vibe. Oh, speaking of which, I saw this online. You got to look this up. Uh, Doug Stanhope voiced his opinion about... Did you see this? About About what? Louis. He did? And not that I want to stay on the fucking Louis shit. But Doug came forward. Because Doug is a guy that says, fuck you to everybody. Yeah. Fuck the industry. You know, the funniest thing I think he ever said, he was in the green room talking shit to somebody. And Eric Griffin walked in. And uh, we did that Showtime show together, the I'm Dying Up Here show. Mm-hmm. And uh, he says... Uh, Doug Stanhope says to Griff, he goes, oh, we were just talking shit about you. <laughs> and Griff goes, well, what were you saying? And he goes, we're talking about that terrible fucking piece of shit show that you're on. And Griff started laughing. And he told me that. I started laughing too. He said right to his face. He goes, that show sucks. It's fucking terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, good. At least he's honest. I'd rather that than when comics lie to you about shit. We're yeah. like, dude, I love, I love that thing that you... I'd rather you not say anything to me or if you're a real friend and he's not even, he wasn't a friend of Eric's. He was just like, that shit's garbage. Yeah. But they had to laugh about it. But I, well, thank I, God he was somebody who was truthful, you know? But I think about this sometimes, like it's so hard. See, look at that. Here, well, let's read what he said real quick. Take Louis C.K. out of the equation. That's exactly what we were just saying. They're, they're mad at him, not at the thing. If a full performance of Hamilton was pirated and uploaded to the internet, how would it be legal for all those shitbag gossip websites to yep to provide that illegally obtained content on their sites? Correct. I agree. Correct. It's a great point. It's only because, yeah, that and that's one thing sometimes about the about some of these liberal sites. It's like it, the rules only apply if they apply the way that they want them to. Well, that to me is my biggest problem with like, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a lefty and I'm not a righty. I don't like either. I think both people are f- insane. But I do think the biggest problem I have living in a leftist place like California, lefties uh, can get mad unless it applies to them. Right. And then they go, well, no, 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 but, uh, but no, but for this, no. Yeah. But it's like, but you just, but you just, you just threw stones at all that shit before. Dude, I remember being in school and uh, statistics or something and it was like, it it was freshman year in college and the teacher's like, statistically speaking, it was 1,400 kids in the class. It was like, Two of you guys will die in car accidents. One of you guys will be a registered sex offender. She was right, wasn't she? No, I remember standing up and going, not it. That's what I said. Not it. Yeah. That's good, though. Get the fuck out. Oh, not me. <laughs> not me. Uh-uh. I can't. I mean, I just let the Lord know, you know what, what I didn't want. She, they, they put out so many false statistics to us when we were kids, I feel like. Because mm-hmm. we're, we're in this similar oh, yeah. age range. They say you look blind if you jerk off in the end of the moon, yeah. you go blind. Cross your eyes too long, you go blind. I remember, yeah. I remember the worst one was... This is something I've talked about before. Everybody, this is what this was in school in sex ed class. Everybody is going to get herpes. I yeah. remember them saying that. Mm-hmm. They were like one out of four, one out of four. Yeah. Let me tell you, I know four people, and I don't think they have herpes. I don't know why they think everyone is going. They used to tell you you were going to get HIV. Yeah. You, they, oh, they everybody you had you were HIV. Gonna, you were going to get that? AIDS. Yeah, you were going to get AIDS. Dude, they tried to stop football at our school because of HIV. They said there was some, some kid have it in, yeah. in case of blood. 
Yeah. That's cr- that is crazy shit. You would have to I had a conversation about this too. Someone was like, "Well, you know, it's easier to get than you think." I was like, "No, bro. It's w- yeah. harder to get than you fucking think." Dude, you have to really you have to yeah. You have to beat yourself up and then fuck somebody when you've definitely been on, just gotten out of a fire almost. Right. And then you might not get AIDS. Yeah. Here's the best way that I look at it. Magic Johnson's wife doesn't have AIDS. Yeah. How? And he's the all-time leader in assists. You think he didn't get... <laughs> no. You think he didn't try to fucking push it over <laughs> to her on, on the way man. to the hole? I don't get that Come shit. on. My buddy Jim's uncle, he always says, he's always like, because he's gay. Yeah. He goes, Magic Johnson was a homosexual. Yeah. I was like, you think so? He goes, oh, yeah. His wife would have it by now. Yep. And and I said, and I said, it, my buddy Jim's uncle, he said, uh, he said, you're being crazy. He's like, he, he wasn't gay. And he goes, he goes, oh, yeah? You don't know any other straight guys with AIDS? Nobody had any answers. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good point. And they call them bobcats in the black community, a gay man. They call them bobcats. Bobcats? Why? Yeah. I don't Cause know. Because they're creeping. Yeah, Bobcats probably because the they sexy, but they still doing something. They sexy, you know? but they'll kill you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they sexy, but they'll kill you. But they call them gay men in the gay in the black community bobcats. My favorite joke that you tell, by the way, when we get on stage at the comedy store, you always do this to Jeff. You do this to me too. Yeah, you, 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 he almost says the same thing to me every time I come on. You say that's somebody's stepson. Yeah. Which is so funny. You know why? Because that's true. Yeah. I am a redheaded really? stepchild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah, I got man. a stepdad. You just have that step, you have that stepson anger in you. Well, stepsons that, are always fucking redhead. violent. It's a redhead. That's thing. true. And all, r- redheads all redheads are stepsons? All redheads are stepkids. Wow. Have to be. Because the original father was never going to stick around. Yeah. Once they see the red hair, the original oh, father's yeah, like, damn. mine got into drugs and They're like, what is this? Is something out of the garden? <laughs> I'm out of here. Put it back. Put it back. Yeah. Uh, but you you always say that. Uh, give it up for that's someone's stepson, F- Santino. And then he says to Jeff, uh, who plays the piano, you always say, he's, you know, he's blind. You yeah. always say that about Jeff. And that, guy, that makes and me laugh it. every single so time. So one time I was like, give it up for Jeff. He's terminally ill. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and everybody laughed, dude, which is pretty interesting. When did you know that you had red hair? Was there a time you realized it in your life that you realized that you were a redheaded person? And that yeah, you- yeah, yeah. Probably, probably when I was... Uh, Probably when I was kindergarten. In kindergarten, I got into a, that's where Slugger, that Slugger Santino bullshit came from. I told that story because I would get into fights and the mm-hmm. teacher, I got kicked out of Moody Bible. I got kicked out of a Catholic school I for fighting. I got kicked out of another, uh, ki- uh, uh, I got kicked out of two different places for fighting. Wow. That's when I knew because people would make fun of my hair. So I got defensive. My first move was always to punch somebody. Yeah. That, that was the first thing I wanted to do. You had violence in you. Oh, constantly. But it was only because. You look so religious. Do people tell you that a lot? I, I, I look, uh, you you know look what, you, very Catholic. Helpful, people would say. So Catholic, like like church people, look like you could ask them for favors yeah. or ask them for directions. And you have that youth pastor beard going mm-hmm. too. People always can come. Yeah, people come up to me and they go, "Tell tell me what the day is going to bring." Yeah, <laughs> I can't <laughs> I tell you, bro. Know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't <laughs> More know. people ask me for directions than you can ever imagine. Really? Because redheaded people don't look. They they look. Um, well, if someone's lost in L.A. and they see a, ro- a, a room of you guys, we're all standing on the corner. They would ask me first because they think. You know, well, he is a. He's involved. He's involved. He he might be the he might be either the leader or the wolf. Yeah. You, you guys could just be guys. Right. I They're, have to fill well, in the gap. Well, they don't see us. Mm-mm. No, I stand out, and they go. I wonder if he's a leader or if he's a wolf or or, or if he's he's the devil himself. What wouldn't some, you want to say hi to the devil if you saw him on the corner? Oh yeah. You got to talk to him for a minute. Oh yeah. Because they asked me, how do you get to Sautel? Oh yeah. And I always 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 lie. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've ever given a real direction in my life. I think when people say, hey, how do you get to Hollywood and Highland? Yeah. I was like, go down La Brea as far as you can go. <laughs> Dude. I lie every time people ask me for directions. Dude, one, one thing I realized. I've never given a real direction. I think that's my favorite thing to do in LA. <laughs> one thing I realized about, <laughs> one thing I realized about directions is that, um, is that like the second I ask somebody for them, right when they start giving them to me, I don't fucking want to know them anymore. I just want to go figure it out myself or look you, on my phone. Yeah, like I, 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 don't, I, can, yeah. I can't, I can't anymore. Because they take too long to tell you. Too long. You know what bothers me is when someone's, this this happened yesterday, when someone is too chatty in line for a thing. I'm trying to get a coffee or yeah. food and so, this woman was chatting with a girl at the front and I'm not a nice guy when I'm impatient and hungry and yeah. I get real angry and she was chatting and I kept going like this. Uh, yep. like that making sounds like that mm. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and the woman turned uh, around and she turned around and she goes oh I'm, I'm so sorry and I said you know <laughs> like that <laughs> I didn't say anything I just, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's my way of saying just get, you gotta just go Yeah, people get too chatty I yeah. don't, w- ch- you can't be chatty with strangers 
you, you know, like take it, do the thing. Hey, da, da, how you doing today? Da, da, da. But then you got to keep going. Yeah. I don't like chatty people. Yeah. I don't like to sit when someone wants to engage with me, like airplanes or anywhere where you're stuck with somebody. Yeah. So I, I don't oh, want to chat. Dude. I don't want to chat with you, man. I'm not a chatty guy. One lady, I remember one time I had pretty bad body gas on a um flight, right? You were, you were, were you letting it out slow? Bro, there was nothing I could do. It was almost like something had just, I don't know, like a ghost was in me and didn't want to come out all at once. And <laughs> there was a lady next to me and I kept blaming it on, on a baby, you know, because I had a baby nearby. This fucking baby. Oh, man, was who is this, this guy? Yeah, what the yeah, and it's a girl too. First I thought it was a boy, then it was a girl baby. Then I felt so bad, you know. There is something fucked up about blaming that on a girl baby. Yeah, it's kind of, yeah, that's mean. But then at one point the lady was really buying into that it was this baby creating this scent. So you know? she kept looking at the baby. Yeah, and the, the lady was getting so pissed. The lady next to me getting so pissed at this fucking baby. And then one time, brother, was one. She goes, ooh, that one was warm. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> and I was like, God, I got to get some help for myself. Sometimes when I have to fart on airplanes, I'll get up and on the way to the bathroom, I'll fart through the oh. aisle. <laughs> oh, my God. That's one of my, God, one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> I don't like any of those people on the plane anyway. I, I, I don't like any of those humans. I feel like every time you get on any airplane, they... Co- they, they got- call that going to Jersey if you fart down the middle of the aisle. <laughs> <laughs> they that's call that like. going to Jersey. That's the turnpike. I take, yeah, I take yeah. the turnpike all the way to the bathroom. I like to fart, go to the bathroom, wash my hands, and then wait about a minute. And then when I come out, you know, people in the aisles are doing this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I walk by and I go, ugh. And they, <laughs> then they, then they think I think it's them, and they, they and they go like this, oh. Ugh, fucking pig. Yeah, no, you pig, gross. Do um, you I'm, think- by the way, I almost died coming back into L.A. on a flight. Really? Maybe the scariest flight I've ever had. I've heard, I've heard uh, a lot of comics talk about bad, scary coming back to town flights when you're on the road, mm-hmm. dude. I we've flown so many times. This was so fucking bad. Uh, when we landed, finally. They said that they had to ground airplanes from leaving because the wind was so strong in wow. Burbank, and it was so strong coming out of Vegas. Mm-hmm. I'm not even remotely kidding. We had we came in like this the mm-hmm. whole time. Very dangerous, Vegas. Oh, bro, the worst. And it was about 100, 200 feet above the ground. Like that's how that's how much gap we had left. And instead of trying to glide like that, dude went nose down. I mean, dude, we sl- I mean, we bounced when we hit. That's how hard we hit. And everyone's holding on. And then when I got off the plane, there was a priest waiting at the terminal. Mm-hmm. And I went up to him. I gave him a big hug. Oh. I said, "Thanks, man. Thanks for everything." Dang. He knew. He knew. Dude, I, he said, "I got." He said, "I, I, I understand, my son." And that, and that's why, dude. When you're on those planes, what would you do? It's going down. What do you do? What does Andrew I always, Santino I, I always play do? This game. Slugger. I play this game with a friend. What are your last two words if you're going to crash? Like it's <laughs> barreling down towards the ground, and the pilot's like, "This is it. This is it. We can't. We're going to fucking crash." Two words. That's all you have. What do you say? Fuck, man. <laughs> <laughs> so you ate a lot of meal out of the fuck. That's good. Fuck, man. That's, That's really good. But I would my word. To... My words would be, knew it. <laughs> knew it. Oh, <laughs> knew it. Just to get what with it. Asshole. Just to fuck with everyone's head on the plane. <laughs> right? It is. And I would go, knew it! <laughs> Just to fuck with everyone's. Fa- <laughs> Why do you tell us? I love that idea. No, but you know what? It, you know what I think about all the time? Huh. And I was with my fucking wife on this flight, but it was getting so bumpy. There was a really attractive girl sitting across the aisle, mm-hmm. and I thought I think I would kiss my wife first, but then I would also go kiss that hot girl because <laughs> I just I thought about that. I thought if we die, I'm gonna get one on my wife, <laughs> and I gotta get one on this strange hot yeah, yeah, woman. Yeah. She's she's it's just, that'll be it. I'll never have this again, dude. I would I think probably stand up in front of everybody, maybe stand on my seat and just open my ass up to everybody that's back <laughs> behind me. <laughs> just let them see just one more time yeah they have to be see. like what the fuck and then they just die right before they die yeah the last thing they see is your <laughs> asshole and, and but you don't see anything you just you feel yeah, it you yeah, can I just feel, feel it the, the whole joy. time yeah that's kind of yeah that would be something that'd be pretty awesome and i would love exciting time. what i what i love to see is when i'm on a, a really bad bad flight i love to see somebody not bothered I think that's the most gang- yeah. gangster shit. I seen a guy reading a newspaper. Mm-hmm. We were in a we were in a fucking storm, <laughs> whipping us around. And the dude and the dude was going like this, <sighs> annoyed that the fact he couldn't the newspaper wouldn't stand still. Yeah. Everybody else is doing this thing on the seat, and he was like, 
uh, yeah. pissed off, <laughs> like angry at the air. <laughs> Some people are so, yeah, usually that's like a rich guy. Like rich Real rich guys. Yeah, because they know like, they, they don't die like that. If they die, <laughs> they just come back back at their house. Yeah, they will. They, get, they just they start get, back at their house the next day. Yeah. They just yeah. wake up and they're alive again. Yeah. Yeah, rich people don't die. Yeah. They don't die. Mm -mm. Dude, you know who passed away today? I read I this who. on the way here. I know who. Um, mean Gene Oakland. <laughs> well, he died last night. He did? Yeah. This morning was Bob Einstein. Do you know who that is? Bob Einstein? Do you guys know who that is? From Einstein's Bagels? Uh, he owned Einstein's Bagels. No. <laughs> <laughs> Super Dave from Curb Your Enthusiasm. Do you remember oh, wow. Super Dave? Oh. Marty Funkhauser. Wow. Yeah, he passed away. It's fucking bullshit. It made me so mad. That dude was so cool. His brother is Albert Brooks. You guys know, you know Albert Brooks. <laughs> yeah, that's his brother. He's dope, dude. He he died, and yeah, Mean Gene died last night. Very sad that Mean Gene died. Yeah, Do that's you... Bob. You know, you know him, Marty Funkhauser, Funkhauser from Curb. Yeah, he fucking I don't died. Know him. When do you think you die, man? When do I think I die? Yeah, honestly, I think I live longer than I'm than I'm supposed to. Wow, I just had a vision that you don't. <laughs> and I'm not even joking, bro. I don't mean that in a bad way. I love you and everything, but I just. When am I gonna go? Thirty-seven. Bro, that's in like a year and a half. Sorry, man. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> All right. I, got I was you. hoping you were already 37. Then I was going to be like, Fuck. how do I go? Huh? How do I go? It's a surprise, man. I know how you go. You do? Mm hmm. You're going to be 116. You'll be the oldest living person in the United States of America. Because it can't be worldwide. There's always some old dude in India who's like 190. And it's a woman. Yeah. But you are flying back to. Uh, Louisiana, mm. and they're going to give you a, an award for the oldest person in the United States. Like a paper award? Mm -mm, bro, it's a, like a trophy? it's a it's a huge plaque, mm. like a huge plaque. And the plane lands, and you get off the plane, and everyone is cheering loudly. You are getting so much praise and love. The, the news is there, you know. Everyone's so happy. And as you're walking down the steps to get out, you get assassinated assassinated at 116 mm-hmm mm -hmm. why you did some shit in your 70s damn you did some fucked up shit in your 70s would you kill and yourself the and, and the dude that kills you by the way mm -hmm. black guy no brandon showers brandon showers his nephew <laughs> brandon showers his nephew mm-hmm does he have brain issues from fighting mm-hmm fuck Everybody does. You know, when one member of your family fights, everybody gets brain damage. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> would I kill myself if what? Yeah. What would I do? What would you say? Would I kill myself if I what? Would you kill yourself, you think, if um, if if you could, you think? I can. But I won't. I would never. Yeah, I wouldn't either. I, I would never in a million years. You know, I've joked about, I joke, I'll joke about suicide, and my lady doesn't like it. But I tell her because I joke about it, I would never do it. Right. I've had three friends kill themselves. Three, four. And the big, most annoying thing in the world is when someone goes, did you see it coming? Like, no, motherfucker, we would have stopped it. Yeah. That doesn't make any goddamn sense. Yeah, we wouldn't have let Lance fucking jump off of a fucking building. If he told us, if he sent a couple of emails being yeah. like, yo, thinking about jumping <laughs> off a building. Did you see it coming? Yeah. Yeah, we would have fucking stopped it if you saw it coming. No, I think because you, I joke about suicide, because I joke about shit like that, because comedy, you have to just pick apart sadness. Mm -hmm. I think I would never... You know how they say suicide. You know how they say suicide is selfish. They say it's the most selfish act. Yeah. I think it's the opposite. I think it's com completely selfless. I think selfish people would never kill themselves because they because they want to live. Oh, that's interesting. Selfish people want to live. I'm a selfish person. I want to live. I want to see how this turns out. Yeah. I don't want to kill my fucking self. That's insane. Why? What a waste. That sucks. I think I think selflessness causes people to because they just don't want to be anymore. They don't, right, they don't do think anything. anything of themselves or they yeah. Yeah, they're just like I don't like me. I don't like me, and I don't want to burden other people. People say selfish because they're like, you don't know what you've left in your wake. It's like, I don't know. I mean, they they, they do, but they just don't want to be it. And they just don't want to do the thing anymore. Yeah, I could. I would never. You would never. I wouldn't kill myself, dude. Never. Not as an adult, man. I would have done it when I was a child or something. Teenager, I used to think about it. Yeah, I used to get real sad. It's hard being a teenager, dude. Your arms like grow overnight and shit. Your arms are longer than all your body. Yeah, my my hands used to hit the ground when I walked, dude. Yeah. One of my buddies came to school. His fucking neck was like a foot and a half long one week. <laughs> yeah. Like, what the fuck? Dude? But in a year, he grows out of it. Yeah, it all fine. matches. It all but matches. But there's that time where you're like... The pieces are all fucked up. Dude, how can you not? But yeah. You yeah, no, as a teenager, I thought about it sometimes. I, I used to do this some sad shit. 
Pearl Jam had a song, has a song called Better Man. Oh, yeah. When I got mad, I would go sing and cry in my room to that fucking oh, yeah. song. When I was like, I want to kill myself. Dude, I used to cry at the gym listening to O-Town. That would make you cry? Yeah. But, but why, why would you at the gym? Because it would hit you hard. Yeah, because I was that kind of still kind of a showman, even though I was fucking sad. You like to be out in public crying? Yeah. You public cry? I have, man. When was the last time you cried as an adult? Oh, probably last week or something. I mean, you don't listen to our podcast, obviously. <laughs> no, nah, but a I, real fucking. But I mean, joker. for real, <laughs> yeah, for real. Oh yeah, then, bro. Hard. Oh, hard. Not like got emotional, bro. I get emotional. Okay. I get, I'm talking about cry for real. Like I get emotional at like Cheerios commercials. I'm not oh, saying like that. I cried. I, oh, I cried about probably a week and a half ago. I was listening to a sad country song. It got you. Yeah, I put it on just so it gets me. I do that too. I put on sad shit. When I get sad and I'm angry, I take a drive. I put on even sadder shit. Yeah. Yeah, so I really get it. Oh, dude. I'll fucking get so fucking sad, like, bitch. Well, like, you know what I do sometimes? <laughs> if I'm getting real sad, mm. I put on the saddest fucking music I can find and I go by the old house I used to live in in yes. Culver City mm -hmm. and just sit out front and cry like a bitch. Oh, dude. I'll drive. And the lady that lives there now has yeah. seen me a few times. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude. I'll... I think she just watches. I think oh. she just likes it. She'll stand there and watch me cry in the car. Oh, that ain't that sad, dude. I'll sometimes, bro, I'll go to the fucking graveyard and write my brother's name on half of the graves with a permanent marker huh a permanent marker with a sharpie not no not a pen a pen doesn't work but you can use a marker yeah yeah sharpie marker that's yeah. what i said a sharpie yeah, yeah. and it wash it doesn't wash off though i don't stay that long dude yeah, you never I know don't stay long enough to fucking lose my shit and then get out of there <laughs> and sometimes i'll stand and i'll get there's even like with this one graveyard with the grass there's like a hole in the ground i'll even crouch down in there and sit for a while yeah like i'm dead too daytime though yeah. You won't do nighttime. No, I won't. You can't be anywhere near there. Mm -mm. Do you hold your breath but when you go past the graveyard? But that's how sad I like to get. Yeah. You ever hold your breath when you go past the graveyard? Do you know that? No. Do you never play that game when you were kids in the it's car? It's not a game, dude. It's a game. No, it's lift your feet up when you go past the graveyard. No, it's hold your breath. Really? Yeah, hold your breath. Because yeah, you, you don't want to suck in the souls of the dead. Really? Yeah, but meanwhile, you're sitting in the graveyard sucking in every fucking soul you can. <laughs> How about this? You know people go watch movies at the cemetery? Have you ever done that? Mm -mm. In LA? You don't know about this? Oh, dude, I'll listen. I'll play that movie that Nicolas Cage was in. Angels. What's that movie called? Angels in the Outfield? Yeah. I'll play Angels in the Outfield, dude. The soundtrack. That's a baseball movie. And Is it? Yeah. Case, well, it still has Angels in it. And I'll play Angels in the Outfield and fucking write my brother's name on all the graves at a graveyard, bro. Every single grave? No. Six or seven. Yeah, that's, that's a, how sad that's I like amount. to get. Yeah, not too sad. If it was like 50 or 60, then it'd be weird sad. Oh, I'll get sad, bro. You, you can't get sadder than that. No. Yeah. When you get sad at your house, where do you go? Anywhere, man. Shower? Oh, I used to do that. In my 20s, I would cry in the shower. I couldn't. I never did that. Really? I, I like do... to cry in front of a mirror now so I can see it. You can look at it. Yeah. You want to know what's really going on. I like to feel it all. I can't do anything in the shower but shower. I don't like fucking. I don't jerk off. You know, people no. used to jerk off in the shower. I think that's weird. Yeah. It's just like, uncomfortable. Um, I like to be dry when I jerk off for some reason. Oh, yeah, I could see that. Like, I don't like pool pool fucking. I did very that. very Middle Eastern of you. Yeah. Yeah, we like to be dry Imagine fucking. Imagine just jerking off into the dry abyss all the time in the desert. Oh, jerk on. I've, I've jerked off in the desert. Yeah? When I lived in Arizona, I used to sit outside. I used to hold a cactus with one hand and just jerk off with the other Ooh. one. I like the pain. Yeah, I like a dry pain. That's sad. Yeah, that's real sad. <laughs> yeah, you win. <laughs> I think you win. Um... Are you on the road anytime soon? Throw your dates out there, man. I go Bakersfield January 19th. I've never done that before. Where, at the Brewing Co.? Yeah, have you, have you done yeah, it? Yeah, Dude, have, there, is it fun? Dude. Is it fun? Uh, it'll be great, man. It's awesome. Yeah, I've heard a bunch of people that have done it. I, I know Diaz did it. A bunch of people have done it, and they asked to come do it. So I'll Bakersfield January 19th, and then the next weekend, uh, I'll be at the Draft House in, in Arlington, which is like D.C. So if you're in the D.C. area, January 24, 25, 26. Nice. And the rest of the dates, I'm lining up. But, you know... Go to the website. Go to andrewsantino.com and see all that shit. Yeah, man. Well, um, thank you for coming on, bro. Thank you, bro. I'll have to get over there to Whiskey Ginger sometime. You got to come. You yeah. have to, you have to come over. And also, um, we have to figure out this whole this thing because this is this is not. They can't cut this in half. Well, I just wonder what the fucking deal is. I texted Brandon. Brandon. Bra so, Brennan. He said, "Left donuts at your door." That's cute. You know what's really funny? You know, you know, he never fought. You know that was a lie. <laughs> <laughs> he has a twin. Did he really? Yeah, that wasn't him. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was bullshit. He has a twin? Yeah, identical twin. Jesus, yeah. shut it down, bro. He used to fight. Not not Brent Br Br Brylin? Yeah. Shab? He never fought. Oh, dude, Burton? Yeah, Burton Shop. Burton yeah. Sheep? <laughs> Burton Sheep? Burton Sheep, the fucking... Burton Sheep. Jewish prize fighter? Mm -hmm. yeah, never fought dude. once, yeah. dude. Really? Yeah, you know, he went to he went to a doctor to get the ear thing, the cauliflower ear? Uh-huh. That was manufactured. No way. Fake. Fake, fake, fake. That's fake? They can do that now? Mm-hmm. Where in America? 
No, you got to go overseas. Yeah. Yeah, you got to go overseas. Oh, my God, bro. Yeah, he had his ears done just so I he could be like, that was me. I can't believe that. No, but his brother was the real one that did all the fighting. Who, Bryson Cowers? Bryson Chowers. Is that his name? Yeah, he lives in Canada. Oh, wow. Way up north. And that's his... This is his twin. Jesus. Huh. That that And that, that to me, is why he's playing this whole you tied game. Yeah. I don't know what their deal is, man. I'm mean, I'm gonna call them after this and find out. But um, let's go find. I him. definitely, but I'll say this: you definitely, you know, if you even came in third, did he say you came in third? I came in third. Yeah. Wow, that's huge, bro. That Last is. year you weren't even in it. Wasn't even close. Wasn't even a sniff. Wasn't even wow. around. Came come came through. Well, we made some noise. I think this this people people wanted this to happen. People wanted us to sit down. Yeah, and we'll do it again. I've had to pee so bad during this one. It's been hard for me to fucking think. Well, let's go pee. <laughs> Andrew Slugger Santino, I thanks you, for bro. coming in, man. Thank yeah, you. good to this see you, good. bro. Good we'll do it again you. soon. Yeah, yeah. Cheers, bro. Now I'm just floating on the breeze, and I feel I'm falling like these leaves. I must be cornerstone. Oh, but when I reach that ground, I'll share this. Of mind I found I can feel it in my bones, but it's gonna take a little time for me to set that parking brake and let myself all wild shine.